So over the past few months, I've received thousands of emails on creating a video to give examples of how to use the sum and product of roots formulas. Those formulas are the sum equals negative b over a, and the product equals c over a. And what, this formula, what these formulas allow you to do are to reconstruct the original quadratic equation if you're given the answers. So often in a math class, you're given an equation to solve, and you find the answers. But in this type of problem, you're given the answers, and you have to go backwards to come up with the original equation. So that's precisely what we're going to do in these videos through four examples. Example one, the roots are x equals 2, x equals negative 7. Well, to use these formulas, the first thing I need to do is construct the sum. The sum means just literally adding those two roots together. 2 plus negative 7 gives us a sum of negative 5. Now you'll notice that when I express the sum, I write it as a fraction because the sum formula is a fraction and I want things to line up. And that formula is negative b over a. Moving on to the product. The product of these two roots is found by just multiplying the answers together. Multiplying 2 and negative 7, we get negative 14, which I, again, I'm, I'm going to express as a fraction, negative 14 over 1. I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to c over a. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to identify very clearly what a, b, and c are. Now, there could potentially be a complication with a because a occurs in the denominator of both of these formulas. And if you look over and a is the same, which it is in this case, it's 1, then you're good to go. But sometimes it's not the same. And for whatever reason, if a were not the same, what you would need to do is rewrite the fractions so that they had the same denominator. And we'll look at that in a later example. But for now, a is 1. Now, trying to figure out what b is, you'll notice that negative b is paired with negative 5. Well, if negative b equals negative 5, then b equals 5. And finally, c is paired with negative 14. I like to put these values in what I call a cubby. And now that I have these values clearly identified, I can substitute them into the generic quadratic equation, which looks like this. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And plugging in these values for those variables, we get 1x squared plus 5x minus 14 equals 0. So what this means is if you are actually given this quadratic equation and you factored or you used the quadratic formula on it, you would get as answers 2 and negative 7. And what we're essentially doing is just working backwards, having been given those answers. In example 2, the roots that I give you are a little more complicated because they're fractional. Let's take a look at how to use the sum and product of roots to go backwards and come up with the original quadratic equation. Starting with the sum. The sum is going to be the adding of these two roots, 1 half plus 3 fourths. Well, to add fractions, you really should have a common denominator, so I'm going to rewrite the 1 half as 2 fourths. And I get a sum of 5 fourths, which I'm going to set equal to negative b over a. Now the product is going to equal 1 half times 3 fourths. And this turns out to be 3 eighths, which I'm going to set equal to c over a. Now, I'm noticing something that's going to be important, and that is here, a is aligned with 8, but here, a is aligned with 4. And that's going to be a problem because a needs to be the same thing. So I'm going to have to find a common denominator between 4 and 8, which is 8, and rename this fraction. So instead of thinking of this fraction as 5 fourths, I'm going to think of it as 10 eighths. Now I'm going to identify a, b, and c in the cubby. a is paired with 8. Negative b is paired with 10, so b is going to equal negative 10, and c is paired with 3. I want to make it very clear which fraction I was looking at to get a and b. And that was this one over here. Okay, now that I have my a, b, and c clearly identified, I can plug that into the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Or 8x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals 0. So what we just came up with is the quadratic equation 
which when factored or if you use the quadratic formula would give you x equals one half or x equals three fourths as your answer. Okay, in example three, I give you two roots that include radicals, and this could be intimidating for some people, but the process is exactly the same. I'm going to start by finding the sum of these two roots, which means to add them together. And what I'm adding are root six plus negative root six. When you add something to its opposite, you get zero, which I'm going to express as zero over one, and setting this equal to the formula of negative b over a. Now moving to the product, we're going to be multiplying root 6 and negative root 6. A positive times a negative is a negative, and root 6 times root 6 is just going to be 6, so it's going to be negative 6 over 1. And I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to the formula C over A. Our A's are in agreement, so now it's time to identify A, B, and C. A is 1. Negative b is aligned with 0, so b is 0. c is negative 6. Putting this into the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, we end up with 1x squared. There's no linear term, but there is a constant of negative c equals 0. This is the quadratic equation, which when factored or used, uh, if you use the quadratic formula on it, you're going to get the answers x equals root 6 and x equals negative root 6. In our fourth and last example, we're given roots that are negative 3 plus or minus i root 5. My teaching tip for a problem like this is to, re to rewrite those roots distinctly as negative 3 plus i root 5 and negative 3 minus i root 5. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Now I'm going to start the process of finding the sum. This looks scary, but what we're really adding together are negative 3 plus i root 5 and negative 3 minus i root 5. And you'll notice that i root 5 occurs in both of these, but 1 is plus and 1 is minus, which means that when we add them together, those terms are going to cancel out. So we're really just left with negative 6, which I'm going to write as negative 6 over 1. And I'm going to set that equal to the formula of negative b over a. And then I'm going to move to the product. Now the product is going to be multiplying these two binomials together. Now if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that when I multiply a binomial by its conjugate, I don't actually do a full FOIL. And that's because whenever you multiply a binomial by its conjugate, the outer and the inner automatically cancel out. So you're just left with the product of the first term and the product of the last term. So I call this a Florida situation because the initials that we're left with are F and L. So to figure out the product, we're going to multiply the first terms together, which are going to be negative 3 times negative 3 or 9. And then we're going to have minus root 5 times root 5 is 5. And then I times I is I squared. Now you need to remember that i squared is the same as negative 1, so we really have 9 plus 5, or 14. I'm going to go ahead and set that equal to the formula for product, c over a. And at this time, I'm going to identify my a, b, and c in the cubby. a is paired with 1 in both instances for the sum and product. Or negative b is aligned with negative 6, which means that b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 14. Now, having taught this for many years now, one common mistake that I would hope that you would avoid by my telling you this is that students will just not make the cubby. They'll go directly from these answers over here to writing, the, writing out the quadratic equation, and they'll screw it up somehow. So just take this intermediate step of showing the cubby, and that'll hopefully safeguard you against any careless errors. So I'm going to write down the, the uh, quadratic equation. And I'll substitute in the variables that we came up with. a is 1, so 1x one squared plus 6x plus 14 equals 0. So in this video, I gave four examples of how to use the sum and product of roots formulas to work backwards to arrive at the original equation that would have produced the answers that are given to you here. I hope it helped.